Let me try that again. Good morning. <laughs> uh, greetings to all of you and welcome here to Zion Lutheran Church once again. Uh, it's a joy to be here with you and gather together in God's house this morning. As we begin our worship, uh, we're going to start off with our Wells Connection video. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. What's a hymnal? A collection of the best hymns, old and new? A devotional book? A guide for worship? It's all of those things, of course, and much more. As our new hymnal becomes available this year, it's helpful to understand just why this book is so important. One important purpose of a hymnal is to pass Christian teachings on to the next generation. Music helps us remember and connect to the basic truths of Scripture. I think music is a way to praise God because you are still sharing His Word and you're still learning about His Word. The way that music uh, connects text to the head and to the heart in such a special, memorable way is invaluable. There's nothing like it. Composers write new hymns every year, and that's part of the reason for revising our Synod's hymnal, to give everyone the opportunity to benefit from these additional works. Most of the new songs in the upcoming hymnal come from historical sources, but some are very new, even from just the last three years. In all cases, the texts have been carefully reviewed to ensure a solid Christian biblical message at the core. Singing is not merely a nice tack-on to worship that happens on Sunday morning. Uh, that singing is a profound way that the, the truths of the gospel flow out of us and, and into the ears and hearts of those around us. The new hymnal also has a solid devotional core, so the book can be useful seven days a week at home, not just during the worship hour on Sundays. I maintain that the hymnal is the best devotional book next to the Holy Scriptures that a Lutheran can use. Our next generation of pastors is receiving extensive training in the new hymnal because the expanded resources will be especially helpful as pastors and music directors choose hymns and prepare for worshiping our Savior. Hymnals tend to be in use for a long time. That's why it's important to ensure our hymnal is forward-looking, effectively passing down our faith in Jesus to the next generation. More than 15,000 hymns were considered. Years of review carefully considered every word with a goal of creating a resource that even our youngest members will see as their own. Two, ready, and go. One. I like singing because you're praising and worshiping God with your voice and talents. Then as they get older and their talents are developing and their interests are diversifying, they really have a foundational skill set of, hey, this is important, this is cool, and I can use this as a way to serve my God. This new hymnal, titled Christian Worship, is designed to be a useful addition to any Lutheran home with daily devotions, Bible readings, prayers, songs for singing at home, and even Luther's small catechism. Northwestern Publishing House will begin shipping hymnals to congregations early next month. We will now continue with our opening hymn, 532.
Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. That you would allow us to gather in worship, not out of duty, but with joy and delight. We praise you, Lord. That you would bring us to a place where you promised to meet your people. We praise you, Lord. For the blessing of seeing the sacred symbols of your house, and the mutual encouragement found in seeing one another. We praise you, Lord. For being with us in all places and through all situations, and bringing together as members of one body of Christ, we, we praise you, Lord. O oh Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Let us worship Him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is our great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand from the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Please be seated. Our first lesson this morning is from Acts chapter 4, beginning with verse 32. In it, we see that God's people love to gather to serve one another and alongside one another. We read, All the believers were, in, were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them, in them all, that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. This is the word of our Lord. We now read together responsibly Psalm 27. I'll read the non-bold portions and you'll read along the bold sections. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I be afraid? Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. Do not hide your face from me. Do not reject me or forsake me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I be afraid? Though my father and mother forsake me, I am still confident of this. Wait for the Lord. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I be afraid? Our second lesson is from Hebrews chapter 10, beginning with verse 23. In it, we see that God's people love to gather to encourage one another. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word of our Lord. Please now rise for the gospel. The gospel is according to St. Matthew chapter 26, beginning with uh, verse 26. In this gospel, we see that God's people love to gather to receive the Lord's Supper. We read, While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. This is the gospel of our Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Please now be seated for our hymn of the day, hymn 735.
Grace and mercy and peace are yours. It all comes to us from God our Father and through his only Son and our only Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The word of God to which we give our focus and our attention is from the psalm. We heard selected verses earlier or read them responsively. We listen to and hear again then verses 4 to 6 of Psalm 27, a psalm of David. One thing I ask from the Lord, this is what I seek, that I live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Yes, he will hide me in his shelter on the day of trouble. He will hide me in his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Then my head will be lifted up above the enemies who surround me. I will offer sacrifices at his tent with a joyful shout. I will sing and make music to the Lord. This is God's word. Let us offer a brief prayer. Come, holy light, guide divine, and cause the word of life to shine. Teach us to know our God aright and call him Father with delight. From every error, keep us free. Let none but Christ our master be, that we in living faith abide in him, our Lord, with all our might confide. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus our Lord, at various times in our life and maybe during the course of the week, uh, which is unique to each one of us here, there are times where we gather. Times where we gather for a meeting. And we know of situations uh, that are unique to various individuals Perhaps those in a company of some sort may have that staff meeting. And maybe if it's a company that especially is focused on retail and dealing with customers, they remind all in the staff the customer is always right. Or maybe it's now that the preseason has started in the NFL, we recognize that there are going to be huddles. And in that huddle, the quarterback or the offensive leader will remind each player, you outmuscle your opponent, and we're going to score a touchdown, keeping them focused on what they're on the field to do. Or you have a situation uh, where there's a gathering at the pitcher's mound, and the catcher's there, the infielders are there, and there are ducks on the pond, there's men on base, and they have to talk about what they're going to do to try to uh, force maybe a double play to get out of a bad situation. And indeed, as school is just around the corner, our teachers and faculties gather together. And in their meetings, they are reminded again and again that it's about the student, it's about the young people, it's about their future. And the best that we can do is to prepare them for that future because they are our future in our society and certainly within the church. Gathering together is about focusing people on someone other than themselves. It's not about me. It's about a bigger picture. It's about a bigger cause. It's about others. It's why we gather, indeed, in God's house here today and on such a regular basis, to look away from ourselves and to look to our Savior God not just to be reminded of in our daily lives what would Jesus do, but to be reminded of what did Jesus do? What has he accomplished and finished for each one of us here today? David, the God-inspired author of the psalm before us, recognizes the beauty and the great value of gathering with God's people. And that blessings abound when God's people do gather. It's interesting that David, uh, early on in our reading, now he does make reference to a tent because they would have had the tabernacle back then, but early on he uses the specific word of a temple. And maybe you recall that as I read it, that he said, this is what I seek that I live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. 
The temple was not built when David wrote these words. We know that his son Solomon was the one who was chosen by God to build that, that great wonder of the world and that presence of God, that house of God that would be there in Jerusalem. David is recognizing, too, that the temple is not just a beautiful sanctuary as we have here, that the temple is where God's word is proclaimed. The temple is, as Jesus would tell his disciples, where two or three gather together in my name, there am I with them. The temple is where God's people are, gathered around that word of Jesus, who is the word made flesh. The temple is also your own body. The Apostle Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who, li who lives in you, that you were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your body. And we have these wonderful pictures in Scripture of the value of gathering in that temple and using that temple not to give glory to ourselves, but to, to the Savior to the one who made us and saved us and continues to sustain us. In seeing art, whether that be a sculpture or a painting, we have the wonderful reminder that in the same way that we would give credit to the, to the person's name, maybe in the corner of that portrait or somewhere at the base of that sculpture, we wouldn't give praise and glory and recognition to the paintbrush or to the chisel that was used to create that detailed sculpture, but the artist. And each one of us here is humbled when we come into God's house to be reminded that we are the tool in God's hand, that we are that paintbrush, we are that chisel, and the Lord God who made us uses us to give glory to him who has made us and saved us and sustained us in that saving faith. See, when we come here today, and every time we come here, we are coming here with our, our garbage bags of sin, aren't we? We are coming here reminded that this is a privilege, this is a high honor to gather before God and to receive him blessings. And bear in mind, when we use that word blessing, we are talking about gifts. And if in your life you receive a gift, those especially valued and appreciated gifts are usually those gifts that probably are unexpected. They, because you did nothing to earn them or deserve them. Otherwise, it would cease to be a gift. It would be a wage. It would be an earning. A gift comes because someone cares for you. Someone loves you. And when we come into God's house, we are blessed with blessings, with gifts of God's grace. And we are made intensely aware of that when we, again, are mindful of our sin, that we've done nothing to earn or deserve this goodness from God. And so we bring those garbage bags of sin before Calvary's cross. And we are reminded, as David also writes in Psalm 103, that he takes that sin and carries it away as far as the east is from the west. And that he loves us so much that uh, as far as the east is from the west, he also goes on to say, so great is his love for those that fear him. This Savior God that we come here to worship comes, is here also to, to change us, to cleanse us, to wash us. And he, he does that in his, in his sacrifice for you. Uh, David certainly is rejoicing in that. He would know that many sacrifices were made in that tent, in that temple, in that house of the Lord ultimately anticipating the day when he would be in God's house forever in heaven, where, in fact, we will live. We, we would not think of these words um, as being practical, let's say. 
that he says in the opening words, this is what I seek, that I live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You know, students need to go to school. We need to do our jobs. We have things to do. We cannot literally live here 24-7. And yet David has that anticipation, and he has that appetite, and God gives that to us as well. To know that we get to be in the presence of God every time we hear his word and also receive his holy sacrament. Listen to the other psalms that impress this, this thirst, this hunger, this desire to gather around Christ, his word, and God's people. In Psalm 42, we're told, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. We are reminded in Psalm 84, a great psalm that elevates for us this value of being in God's house. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. It is almost like this hint of jealousy on the part of the psalmist that how, how privileged is that sparrow uh, to have that nest near God's altar? He goes on to say in the same psalm, verse 10, Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of, of, wicked, of the wicked. And finally, another psalm of David, Psalm 122, I rejoiced with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. We have awesome blessings that keep us focused, that gather us together to make God's will our will. The same one who says, I want all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth, that the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost, becomes our mission and our desire. And we get into this huddle, so to speak. We get into this conference meeting, if you will, we gather into this faculty room of sorts and we gain that focus. One thing about this message, it maybe kind of hits you. Oh, Pastor, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> you are already here. You already know this, and your new man in you, the, the part created at your conversion, knows that this is where you need to be right now. But God reminds us that each one of us here today knows people. You know people that I don't know. And I, no doubt I know people you don't know. Each of us has that mission to influence someone else, to encourage someone else, to speak God's word to someone else, to bring them here, or to have them meet your pastor, and to sit with them during an instruction course, reminding them that these instruction courses that Pastor Schneider and I offer do not tie anyone's hands to joining the church. They are there for us to impart knowledge, God's word, God's wisdom, the truth for their eternal well-being. We have this wonderful blessing, this wonderful reminder, this wonderful encouragement that as we gather here, we, we, get, to, we get to be cleansed and refocused. I recently read, or maybe you can imagine this being the case, uh, a mother carrying out the laundry and getting ready a, a load of white clothes, right? And then when her back is turned before she, she washes that clothes, her son takes this brand new red shirt and throws it in there and closes the lid, and that laundry comes out not white, but pink stained. And you and I, in the course of our week, become influenced, become stained with the sin of this world. 
influenced by a mindset that it's all about you, that you need to listen to your feelings and listen to, to those that are highly educated in the secular universities, those talking heads that seem to know more than us, that they need to be the guide, they need to be the direction, and we need to do what makes me happy. So we get that kind of influence throughout the week, and we need to come here again and again to be cleansed, to be made white again. That happens in the blood of Christ that cleanses us from every sin. And as you and I have that renewed focus, gathering here in God's house, we will respond as David did respond with great joy. This whole psalm is one of joy and security. I don't know if you picked up on that. He, he realizes there are enemies and he's not afraid. If God is for us, who can be against us? You and I have that wonderful, awesome privilege and honor and that joy of looking forward to living in the house of the Lord forever. You see, our Savior came and lived the perfect life we haven't lived. In fact, I think it's worth noting that in Jesus' life, he, he really, in a, a profound way, reminds us this is where we need to be. As a 12-year-old boy, his parents lost sight of him, right? They went to Jerusalem for a festival. They started going home, and they couldn't find Jesus. They lost sight. They were busy with other things and lost sight of where their son Jesus was. And he was in the temple. He was, as he told his parents, I must be busy about my father's business. Again, that's our Savior's will is to become our will. To be busy about our father's business. To want what God wants. And to embrace what he gives us. And to share it with others. And it's also worth noting that Jesus, during his earthly ministry, after he was baptized, we are told that he went to the synagogue. He went to church. You know, part of us might think in our gut, if someone had the freedom to skip out on church because, you know, they've kind of heard it all before since he wrote it. Um, but Jesus went to church. Jesus went there to praise our God. And when you are here, as Jesus did, you are encouraging someone else. There is strength in numbers. Now, Jesus was far more than an, an example. Um, we, we are told that he went there, and that was his custom, to go to church regularly. He is first and foremost the Savior who lived the holy life for all those times you and I have failed in elevating and putting the Lord Jesus first in our lives and, and the praise of his name and the glorifying of of his ministry and what he's done for us, he has forgiven us. And in that forgiveness, under the umbrella and canopy of that grace, you and I have the honor to serve him and to bring, as David would say in Psalm 51, then there will be righteous sacrifices, whole burnt offerings to delight you. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. When we have been washed as we are washed, we get to do something we could otherwise never do. See, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But with faith, with God's forgiveness, we put a smile on God's face. Certainly when we repent, but when we serve him, when we bring our gifts of works to him, when we encourage others and gather with God's people and get to know what their needs are and maybe realize, hey, I can, I can help you in that. And we don't get to that conclusion without meeting with people. We get to do that as our gift back to God. You, know, you think of the little kindergarten child who does that artwork uh, with their crayons and their markers. As that artwork is given to mom, and she treasures it. It's not going to be in a museum somewhere, but it's going to be on the refrigerator. It was given to her in love. And so also our works in love for Christ are treasured by him. And then we get to be with him. 
Let's praise God for the time and the opportunity we have to indeed cherish these blessings that abound as God's people gather now and one day forever with him in heaven. Amen. Uh, we continue now with uh, singing of We Praise You, O God, the Tadeum. Let's all stand, please. Please now be seated as we take this time for our offering. Also, please take this time, if you haven't already, to sign the registers so that we know you've been here today. Please again rise. In the 
morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. pray together the prayer Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Along with our prayers this morning, we include a special request on behalf of Bernice Besky, the sister of Dee Stiver, uh, because she's in the hospital undergoing some testing. We pray. Lord God, we ask you to be with Bernice and the medical professionals who care for her. By your grace and will, help them find whatever issues may be there and get, uh, get her on a path back to health. Almighty and eternal God, we also pray. We give you humble and sincere thanks for the many blessings that you have bestowed on us. You have joined us to a family of believers in faith and love. We praise you especially for preserving us during this pandemic and gathering us together again today. We give you thanks for the blessings we share as members of this church, for your gracious word, for opportunities to worship and to grow in faith and knowledge, for occasions to serve and be served, and for fellowship with believers. Keep our congregation faithful to your word and renew in us an eagerness to do your work. Guide our leaders and help us join them to serve and support the mission of your church. For these great gifts, we thank and praise you, O Lord. Gracious Heavenly Father, you give us the gift of family and loved ones Hear the prayers of those who call to you in every need. Let love and patience rule between husbands and wives, parents and children. Look with kindness on those who are homebound or remain isolated. Protect them and turn them from their fears in this world toward your Son in faith and hope. Restore our spirits each day by the power of the gospel so that we do not lose heart. Because you left behind the lasting legacy of your peace, sustain our homes with it and give safety to those under our roofs. For these great gifts, we thank and praise you, O Lord. Holy Spirit, as we live life as strangers and pilgrims on earth, bestow on us the wisdom and power we need to witness clearly and to act boldly. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated for our closing hymn, 536.
Greetings to all of you again here this morning. What a joy it is to gather here together in God's house. Uh, certainly we do have also the continued opportunity as we continue our festivities together today uh, to go to the field and the ministry center just north of the church here, of the sanctuary, and um, continue our festivities as God's people gather uh, with uh, long games, some time together, and uh, also some lunch. So uh, please stick around if you can for that right after church. Uh, secondly, I wanted to remind you, you saw uh, the, in the Wells Connection uh, the advertisement for our upcoming hymnal and some of the reasons for it. If you're interested in getting a hymnal for your own personal use, whether uh, you're going to want to bring it to church or whether for use at home or both, um, you do have an opportunity to purchase a hymnal uh, uh, and the sign-up is in the entryway. Please note that this weekend and next weekend are going to be the only times left. If you're still wanting to sign up, uh, the, the deadline is going to be next weekend. So please do so uh, if you're still considering that. I leave you to read the rest of the announcements. There are several uh, other things in the bulletin, but I'll let you read through at your own leisure. God's richest blessings to you and go with you throughout your week uh, in, in, in all you do.